Page Turners, and welcome back to the channel. I'm Matthew, the man with a hat, who reads, and this is Monster Hunter International by Larry Correa. I was off and on wanting to read this book for a while. I kept kind of going back and forth on it. It was one that I thought, it sounds interesting, but I have so much to read already. Do I really want to commit to another series as is the problem we all have? I've started so many series this year already, and I know there's no chance I'm finishing any of them anytime soon. So I finally found this mass market paperback edition at Half Price Books here a little while ago. It was like $3.99. I thought, okay, it's the first one in the series. I'll pick it up. I didn't realize it was as thick as it was when I was first thinking about it. This book clocks in at just a just over 700 pages, 713 pages to be exact, but it flies by. So before we go any further, let's see what it's about. Five days after Owen Zastava Pitt pushed his insufferable boss out of a 14-story window, he woke up in the hospital with a scarred face, an unbelievable memory, and a job offer. It turns out that monsters are real. All the things from myth, legend, and B-movies are out there waiting in the shadows. Officially secret, some of them are evil and some are just hungry. On the other side are the people who kill monsters for a living. Monster Hunter International is the premier eradication company in the business and now Owen is their newest recruit. Business is good. <laughs> okay, so you get an idea what we're kind of going with here. Um, Owen, our main character, he has a very... There's like a Dresden quality to him. If you've read the Dresden Files, you know what I'm talking about. He kind of has that same sort of attitude, especially towards authority. <laughs> um, the monsters are indeed creepy at times. The vampires, I mean, this is some really great vampire violence and action. The opening sequence that it describes there about him pushing his boss out of the 14th story window. It's literally his boss has become a werewolf and is trying to kill him in this essentially abandoned office. And it's just, I could see it so clearly in my mind. I'm thinking, this is like a great opening for like a movie. Why, don't, why isn't this a movie? This would be a great movie. Because that opening sequence was amazing. It, and it's a miracle that our main character was able to keep on going. Which is probably a little bit of a problem. If you're looking for some realism and stuff like this, you're not going to get it here. There's some... If you're looking for just a fun time, you're in the right spot. If you're looking for realistic, brutal violence at times, no. Um, there's no way our character, I don't care how tough he is, there's no way he would still be standing after some of the stuff that happens in that opening sequence. I mean, he just keeps getting back up, and I'm like, there's no way that he's doing that. Um... Another issue I did have a little bit of, but not a terrible thing of, was our female character, our main female character right here. Because she starts off really kind of badass and all that, but then later on she kind of just becomes the typical, you know, the typical female character in books like this. I just... I'm like, you had such a strong character. And the other female, there's another female character who's also a real badass too. And I loved her every time she was in there. I'm like, yes, she's great. That's just it. The supporting characters, they're all fun. Um, I Like I said, I did really, really enjoy this. I had an absolute blast reading it. For it being as long as it did, I flew through it pretty quickly. I mean, I started this the same day I started David Copperfield. And I've had this book finished for two weeks, whereas David Copperfield is still going as of this recording. So, And David Copperfield is only about 10 pages longer than this one. <laughs> so take from that what you will. This was a lot faster paced than David Copperfield is. This was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed this. This was a five-star book for me. If you're looking for a great book series to take the place of Dresden Files. If you've read all of those, definitely check out Monster Hunter International. I think there's like seven, eight of them. Probably is not going to tell me in here, is it? Uh, it's not going to tell me anything in here. That's really helpful. That's a really helpful book. There's like seven or eight of these. I haven't gotten any more of them yet. I went looking for the second one and haven't been able to find it anywhere. 
and on Amazon as of the last time I checked, which was like a couple weeks ago. The mass market paperback size of the second book, for some reason, was $74.99. So I'm going to wait. <laughs> I'm not going to pay $75 bucks for a mass market paperback. And if anybody does that, they're insane. So that was my brief review of Larry Correa's Monster Hunter International. Like I said, did I say? I gave it five stars. I really enjoyed it. If you're looking for something in that vein with monsters and just action and stuff, you can do a lot worse than that. So definitely check that out if that's your thing. Or have you already? Have you read Monster Hunter International? Does it sound like something you would enjoy? I'd love to have a conversation going with you in the comments down below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, keep turning pages.